So someone's pouring their heart out to you and you're just waiting for them to finish so you can share your similar story. You catch yourself doing it, you hate it, but you can't stop. Look, there's a biological reason your brain literally cannot just listen. Hi, I'm Gregory, founder of The Brain Academy. So today we're exposing the brain mechanism that sabotage every conversation you have. I'll show you why your brain treats listening like a competitive sport, the speed problem that makes pure listening impossible, and there's this mirror neuron trick that can completely change how you connect with people. Plus, what the eyebrows reveal might blow your mind. Let's get into it. Recently one of my students told me, Gregory, my wife says I never listen. And uh, she's right. <laughs> Even when I try, I'm just formulating my rebuttal. What's wrong with me? Well, nothing. Nothing's wrong with you. See, your brain isn't designed to passively receive information. It's designed to survive through communication. And that means every conversation becomes a mental battlefield where listening always loses. So here's what's actually happening. Conversation isn't natural. I know that sounds crazy, but think about it. Turn taking in conversation is a learned social behavior and your brain treats it like a competition. See, in natural communication, like with infants or animals, there's no turn taking. It's all simultaneous. Crying, gesturing, vocalizing, all at once. But human conversation? We had to invent rules, you know? Your turn, my turn, your turn, my turn. And your brain hates waiting for its turn. It's like holding your breath. The longer someone talks, the more your brain panics about losing its opportunity to, to contribute. So research has shown that the average gap between turns in conversation is just 200 milliseconds. That's faster than blinking. Your brain is preparing your response while the other person is still mid-sentence. Now think about group conversations. Ever notice how you stop listening completely when you have a point to make? You're just waiting, holding that thought, terrified someone else will say it first. So your brain is literally treating the conversation like a resource that might run out. Like if you don't get your words out soon, you lose your chance forever. It's scarcity mindset applied to talking. I mean, watch what happens at dinner parties, right? Someone's telling a story and, and you can see everyone else's eye glaze over. They're not listening. They're loading their own story into the chamber, ready to fire the second there's a pause. This is, isn't rudeness. It's your brain operating on ancient software that says, if you don't speak now, you might never get to. In a tribe of 30 people, that might have been true. In modern conversation, it's sabotaging every interaction you have. Now here's the mechanical problem nobody talks about. Your brain processes information at 400 to 800 words per minute, while people speak at only 125 to 150 words per minute. So what happens? Well, your brain has too much time, way too much time. Think about it, it's like being a Formula One driver stuck in a rush hour traffic. Your brain is built for speed, but conversation moves at a crawl. So what does it do with all that extra processing power? It wonders, it plans, it, it judges, it prepares comebacks, it thinks about dinner, it analyzes their body language, it remembers similar stories, everything except actually listening. And here's what's crazy. Your brain can't just slow down. That's not how neural processing works. It's either on or off. So while you're talking at 130 words per minute, your brain is running at full speed, desperately looking for something to process. What's the easiest thing to process? Well, your own thoughts, right? your own plans, your own responses. So that's what it does. It's not a choice, it's your brain filling the vacuum with the most readily available content, your own mental chatter. But there's a way to hack this. Look, fighting this is useless. Your brain will always be faster than speech. You'll always want your turn. So here's what actually works. Stop trying to listen to their words. Start watching their face. I know that sounds weird, but stay with me. When you watch someone's face while they talk, really watch it. 
something crazy happens. Your mirror neurons activate. These are specialized cells discovered by researchers at the University of Parma that make you physically feel what you observe. See someone smile? Your smile muscles twitch. See someone frown? Your frown muscle activate. You literally start feeling what they are feeling. Not metaphorically, physically. And when your mirror neurons are active, your planning brain shuts up. You can't plan a response while you're mirroring someone's emotional state. The two systems compete for the same neural resources. So here's the technique. Watch their eyebrows. Seriously, the eyebrows are incredibly expressive. They tell you everything about emotional state. Raised, they're surprised or questioning. Furrowed, they're concerned or, or concentrating. Relaxed, they're comfortable. When you focus on their eyebrows, you stop planning and start feeling. You're not listening to words anymore, you're reading emotional states. And suddenly you understand what they're actually trying to communicate. Not just the words they're using. Try it. Next conversation, forget their words. Watch their eyebrows. Your brain will stop planning and start connecting. It's like switching from slow glitchy Wi-Fi to fiber optic. Suddenly the connection actually works. So I'm curious, what's your worst ah, wasn't listening disaster? Like someone asks you a question and you had absolutely no idea what they just said? Drop it in the comments below. I bet these stories are painful, but hilarious. Now, if you want to master the neuroscience of actual human connection, not just conversation, we dive deep into this in the Brain Academy at brainacademy.com. Brain out. Sharpen your mind.